Many thanks for keeping us company. And if you just tuned in, this is Y254 News Highlights. Our discussion Monday tonight, we talk about disaster management. And a reminder with me in studio is Private Socrates. He will help us to understand more about what does it call for to be safe and what should you do in case of a terror like it happened last week on Tuesday. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well. Many thanks for coming and uh, welcome to our studios. It's a pleasure. Now, last week we experienced a terror attack. It's yeah. not the first time it has happened before. But again, uh, we want to see what does it call for uh, to ensure that people are safe in an environment. And when you speak about terrorism, it's something that is premeditated or politically instigated. And the question I want to ask, why do you think Kenya is a soft uh, place for terrorism in the recent past? Okay. Well, uh, first of all, before I add my thoughts on that, uh, it's it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, first forward, my condolences to the families that lost their loved one. Mm -hmm. In these uh, tough times, uh, we pray that God's grace sure. uh, be with them. And uh, uh, Kenya, in my uh, my professional opinion, mm -hmm. is being um, twisted by the terrorists. Right. Uh, this act of uh, planning and executing uh, terrorist uh, attacks in this city is something that is uh, premeditated. Mm -hmm. uh, my opinion is simple. Uh, we, uh, these uh, terrorists are, uh, are thought uh, by the citizenry to come or ail from a neighboring country, and that is Somalia. And uh, for a very long time, Somalia has been socio-economically uh, socio and even politically unstable. And uh, they've been experiencing internal wars, and uh, the army some was set up to help eradicate this uh, group, this terror group in Somalia. Mm -hmm. And our government played its part mm -hmm. as a loyal uh, country uh, forming the Africa Union outfit mm -hmm. and sent some of our uh, defense uh, forces uh, there. Mm -hmm. In a retaliatory uh, move, uh, the, uh, the uh, terrorists found themselves in our country. And they've been doing this as a message to government to withdraw right. the forces. So I think uh, Kenya, and uh, of course the Kenyan government, is being um, twisted to withdraw the forces from the neighboring country of Somalia. And in your own opinion, do you think now we should withdraw our troops from Somalia? Well, uh, my opinion, uh, in the house of cards, in the house of political cards, this a uh, statement that goes bad for a greater good. And I think that is what President Kenyatta and his uh, entire administration have put in place. Uh, continuing to hold our, our members of the elite defense force in Somalia will continue, will continue to see spates of attacks in Kenya. Right. And they are always very, uh, very, very particular in their statements, even on social media, that until such a time that you'll withdraw your forces, we'll always coordinate these attacks. Yeah. Time has come when President Kenyatta must stop his act of being a loyal member of the African Union and bring back our troops to Kenya. All right. In uh, most of the leaders sent their messages of, of condolences to the families affected, and I remember one. Um, Honorable Rayla saying uh, yeah. terrorism thrives in division. Uh, do you think our country, Kenya, we are divided and that's why this time round we were hit? Well, Hillary, uh, we are divided, but our division cannot uh, castigate or go into bring to us external terror attacks. Our division is, has nothing to do with terror attacks. Um, there, is a, there is a political scientist, a graduate from Moore University, uh, who wrote in his uh, final year a thesis. Uh, is called, I think you, you, you guys will look for him so that you can add his thoughts. It's called Lloyd Mutuma. He said uh, the Kenyan uh, terrorist uh, case is something to do with uh, uh, ethno-religious fun fundamentalism, mm -hmm. whereby we, we, the terrorists have guided our thoughts into thinking 
that this thing is, is something to do with the religious intolerance. No. This is purely political grievances, right. whereby um, politicians have directed our thoughts into us believing that our, 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 our forces are strong and they can help bring peace in other nations, right. which is not the case. Uh, if at all our forces did not, would not go to meddle in, the, in that other country and they were here, even if we would be divided ethnically or tribally, uh, in, based on tribal lines, we could not be uh, seeing this terror attack. And you remember, uh, mm, is it one hour and 20 minutes after the DUCIT D2 uh, spat, they claimed responsibility. Yeah. And the underlying factor was that withdraw or else we continue yes yeah now uh let's now move to the the interest of our topic tonight yeah. how do you compare how do we how we uh, compared this situation compared to the other time of westgate how was the response well uh my own professional opinion again it's nostalgic uh, do you say so uh, uh, whereas we are celebrating milestones in terms of uh, response. No, not response, in terms of executing the final assault on the, ter on the terrorists themselves. We are still nostalgic on the, on, 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 on the timelines taken to finally condone them, seclude them, and do away with them. You remember uh, when, 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 social media, when, when social media went abuzz? With, uh, with the blasts being heard from the Riverside Drive? There was assumption from both domestic and foreign media that uh, it was a normal robbery. That's how it begins. Yeah. But now when the gunshots go beyond 15 minutes, it's automatically declared as a terror attack. And then when you're keen, uh, Hillary, this time around the, civi the armed civilians were more responsive than the elite forces. They took a shorter time compared to, to Westgate. But uh, the, the final roundup of the terrorists, mm -hmm. and even the declaring the 21 dead, it's still something that disturbs us as a people. Right. So whereas we are celebrating the milestones of response, we're still nostalgic about the future. Uh, but again, on the question of civilians coming to help with their guns, do you think that was in order? Well, uh, for the first time we saw carelessness in uh, civilians brandishing their guns, especially civilians who are not members of the forces, but are either public intellectuals or politicians, or they have a name in the scene. We saw them brandishing very, uh, very powerful guns, mm -hmm. though not being part of the active operation. I think that was careless, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the, in the Ministry of Interior should uh, draft policies that guide civilians on their usage of their firearms. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you just spoke of uh, Kenyans sharing on social media, and I remember uh, in, in the Westgate attack, uh, yeah. very many pictures were shared on social media, many things were said. But this time around, do you think Kenyan citizens behaved in a right manner? OK, I, I also want to, on, in response to that, I still want to draw a clause from uh, Lloyd Mutuma's dissertation, which uh, highlights uh, uh, very comprehensively on social media sensationalism and uh, how it uh, directs people's thoughts. You remember, the, just during the active operation, there was uh, Kenyans on Twitter mm -hmm. were asking for the de deportation of New York's. Uh, New York Times uh, East African uh, lead editor because she was overseeing the posting of very sensitive uh, photos. Mm -hmm. I think that whereas we celebrate our media in their, respons uh, in their responsiveness and mm -hmm. in coverage, there should be policies that guide what they post. Right. Because th the things that they post, the pictures of the dead, those guys have families, mm -hmm. children, and them learning about the dead the death of their loved ones on social media, we can imagine. Yeah, I remember during the Westgate, we saw the front page of one of the dailies uh, of a person who was in terror, and then uh, there was an outcry this time around. How do you think the media covered uh, this terror? The media was timely. 
uh, they were up to date. I celebrated reporters even risked their lives and accompanied the members of the forces right into uh, the building, and we celebrate them for that. That uh, that one shows selflessness. Uh, but we still maintain, as the consumers of the content brought by the media, there really should be policies and guidelines on how to cover terror. Whereas you can, uh, one, I don't think terror attacks should be covered live. Mm -hmm. I think maybe you should just share photos of the building that has been uh, affected so that people don't go there. And also you should share things like the roads that the government has opened up for usage, but not an active operation. But again, uh, human nature, you want to know what is happening. You want to be curious what has happened between uh, the last minute I checked. Mm -hmm. Yes, should that be? I agree, but it has to be guided right. again. I am basing my, my response to this because myself, I was in my office when I, when I had a colleague of mine react like these are, you know, like you see social media and you shout, there's a terror attack in Nairobi. They're not saying where, they're yeah. not saying when it started, but there's a it could be next to us mm -hmm. there. Then when I logged into my Twitter feeds, I saw uh, three foreigners shot dead in some parts at the hotel section of uh, D2, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, wow, what if this was my dad or mom? I didn't see the building. I just saw the dead body. And so I was shocked. And therefore, it's human nature mm -hmm. to want to know, right. a right to information, but guide it, bad for a greater good. Now, speaking of the terror, it yeah. can happen anywhere to anyone. Yeah. And now this time around, it happens to people who are busy in their offices. Now, do you think organizations should have an awareness or a training to, uh, to their employees in case of such a disaster, what you should do? Both Westgate and Ducit D2 terror spades is a wake-up call, not only to government, not only to the president, but also to uh, independent organizations. In terms, because they keep on saying that security begins with you and me. Whereas this this campaign that uh, guards manning institutions like this should be armed, but again that will take another process of training awareness. And, uh, and all that. So yes, I agree. The government should put, factor in uh, uh, sessions where these people are, their capacity are re-evaluated mm -hmm. and where need be, they can be armed. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, even the people who tried to help, do you think you should know what you're doing because it was an open place and everyone was like, I want to help. But again, oblivious of the danger they were putting themselves into, I do, do, do you think there should be something done to ensure that even if you're helping someone, you're also not putting yourself into danger? Yeah, it goes back to policy, mm -hmm. uh, whereby I, only, I think only accredited institutions like Kenya Red Cross uh, license civilian gun owners mm -hmm. and people trained in disaster mitigation. Mm -hmm. And they, are, they have their valid licenses and documentation should be allowed in an active uh, counter-terror uh, activity. Mm -hmm. But once you can't prove that you are part of this aforementioned uh, segment, mm -hmm. I really think you should just help by praying. <laughs> Very true. Now, let's speak about the security forces. Do you think our intelligence is in a good position to counter-attack? Uh, from what I saw, uh, our intelligence is good. The training is candid and they are up to the task. But that, that does not mean that more exposure should not be done to them, especially now. You know the fear, you know my fear right now? We don't know if there's another coordinated attack somewhere in this city or somewhere in Mombasa. We don't, we are living in the hope that that was the last one. Mm -hmm. And therefore, our team is good. But we need to recruit more people into the elite forces, into the normal administration police, mm -hmm. so that we have sufficiency in combating mm -hmm. terrorism domestically. Uh, still on matters of security, we saw the police being brought together to reduce the the callings or the levels at which you should communicate because something might happen uh, com uh, say Kenya police speaking to this level then before it gets even to the 
uh, armed forces, it's too late. Do you think that one has helped? It has. The centralization of command has helped because for once we saw there was a central command unit whereby only a person was directing and coordinating the operation, the active operation. And like last time when we had members of the Reiki squad uh, finding it hard to coordinate, to, to synchronize with members of the general service unit, one Reiki squad official was shot accidentally at the west gate by a member of the military and they had to withdraw because there, were, there was a decentralization of the command unit and therefore it was a plus to the defense department and next time let there be a centralized way of doing or carrying out counter-terrorism. All right as we finish uh, your final comments and do you think in as much as the government is trying to fund these intelligence groups and our security forces, what more do you think should be done to ensure we are totally safe? All right. Uh, one, the end, the final end of terror in Kenya that is castigated or initiated by the Al-Shabaab will end by just a statement from the head of state that very moment that he will use his powers as the commander-in-chief to withdraw our KDF uh, soldiers from Somalia. Will not that be seen as a sign of weakness? It will be seen as a sign of weakness, but never again, I can assure you, never again will we see such coordinated, but because we cannot lose mm -hmm. our patriotic fellow Kenyans yeah. just because we want to help our neighbor. But, but see, Uganda, Djibouti, Nigeria, these are countries far from, why are they hit? Or because of the army some the same? Let's put it this way then, mm -hmm. uh, Hillary. Let President Kenyatta and his, uh, his, his uh, people from the defense section of the country mm -hmm. hold their operations in Somalia with the KDF only if we have the capacity to handle retaliatory attacks from al-Shabaab. If we are going to continue losing lives, mm -hmm. now we maintain mm -hmm. that they should be pulled out. All right, many thanks for coming and uh, sharing your sentiments on what we need to know and maybe what should be done in the future. Uh, he has been my guest, Bravid Socrates. Many thanks for coming and back home. Many thanks for keeping us company. Now, coming up is Why Masharike and ICD.